Here are a few of the weirdest animals from the deep sea. Number 10, Frilled Shark. This guy's probably been all over your news feeds lately, and for good reason. I mean, anytime scientists discover a prehistoric dinosaur roaming the oceans, it's a newsworthy event. Scientists in November 2017 encountered a frilled shark living off the coast of Portugal. These sharks date back some 80 million years. By scientific standards, that makes the frilled shark a living fossil. Scientists are pretty sure that this shark has stayed the same both on the inside and outside. That means it survived conditions that proved to be too much for the once mighty T-Rex and Triceratops. Despite having existed for so long, humans never knew about them before the 19th century, mainly because they dwell at depths of 4,200 feet. Not only are these sharks rarely seen and super old, but they're way different than other sharks, and they definitely look a lot more intimidating. Growing up to six feet long and sporting 300 teeth and a snake-like head, it's no wonder they've survived all these years. Their quick speed and razor-sharp teeth allow them to lunge at squid, octopi, other sharks, sink their teeth into them, and chow down. The encounter was actually a total accident. A group of scientists from the EU were exploring the Atlantic Ocean trying to minimize unwanted catches by commercial fishes. Ironically, they accidentally caught a shark they had no intention of finding. The good news is that it shed more light on a creature we know very little about. And it's a good reminder that there are many fascinating creatures in the sea who have lived on this earth far longer than us. Number nine, giant isopods. Dwelling at the muddy bottom of the ocean floor is one of the strangest creatures in the deep sea, the giant isopod. Typically found in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of Japan and in the South China Sea, these guys prefer to burrow up in the mud for shelter. As their name might suggest, they're pretty big as far as isopods go. They can reach sizes of up to two and a half feet. And not only do they look really weird, but they have some unusual behavioral characteristics as well. Despite their size and carnivorous diet, most giant isopods only eat a few times per year. In one bizarre case, a giant isopod went five years without eating. That's five years. Talk about some crazy intermittent fasting. When they do eat, their meal of choice is mackerel, and they're known to absolutely pig out on it when they do finally decide to chow down. To cope with their lack of eating, they use their energy sparingly by living in a state of perpetual semi-harbonation. They pretty much just sit around unless they're eating, which actually sounds like some people that I may know. Number eight, the clown frogfish. First off, there are lots of different frogfish and they all have pretty cool names. For example, there's the hairy frogfish or the painted frogfish, just to name a couple. Frogfish blend into their surroundings and wait to ambush their prey using a built-in lure. So basically, they're a fish that fishes for other fish. Yeah. But our focus here is the clown frogfish, also known as the warty frogfish. These guys are usually relatively small, typically growing up to about six inches long. One really crazy thing they do, aside from just looking kind of odd, is emit biofluorescence. Anytime blue or ultraviolet light shines on these guys, they turn red. This is just one of their many methods of camouflage to fake out would-be predators or one of their desired meals. By human standards, they behave rather erratically. Opting to live alone and hiding under rocks and corals, they only gather for, you guessed it, mating. In the event that a male fish lingers too long, the female frogfish actually may eat them. I guess there isn't any cuddle time for these guys. Number seven, sea selps. We've all heard that there's strength in numbers. Apparently, sea selps adhere to a similar philosophy. At first glance, they might look like a really weird jellyfish or maybe something from a science fiction film. Turns out, they're none of the above. They're what marine biologists refer to as tunicates. Sea salps are pretty cool creatures. They go through two main stages in life, basically a life in solitary and a life in a colony. During the solitary phase, obviously they fly solo and they basically just float around using a jet propulsion like feature to pump water through their bodies and trap plankton to eat. Then when they go through the colony phase, they all link up forming a crazy looking chain as they swim forming chains and sometimes even circles and an array of other weird designs most of us had no idea fish were capable of making. Even more astounding is the fact that all of these fish, often numbering in the hundreds, can synchronize their strokes. They do this when they're threatened by a predator or if they're facing especially strong ocean currents. 
The rest of the time, they swim at their own pace. They're so efficient at underwater swimming that aerospace engineers such as Daniel Wies from the Israel Institute of Technology study these guys to try to learn more efficient ways of underwater travel. Oh yeah, one last thing. They start life as females and eventually switch to being male. And no one knows why they do this. Just to add some more intrigue to their story, I guess. Number six, marine hatchetfish. Not to be confused with the distinctly different and less interesting freshwater hatchetfish. The marine hatchetfish are these pretty crazy looking fish that can be found in tropical climates in the Indian, Atlantic, and Pacific Oceans. There are about 40 different subspecies, and frankly, these fish look like stuff out of nightmares. Their bodies are sort of shaped like hatchets, so you guys basically can take a guess at how they got their name. Plus, they're bioluminescent, which is basically just a fancy scientific term for nature's glow-in-the-dark. This allows them to elude would-be predators using a cool method called counter-illumination. They're able to match the light intensity with the light penetrating from the surface, which more or less makes them invisible to their predators. Even though they look like demon fish that dwell in the coldest, saddest depths of the sea, they actually prefer warm waters closer to the surface. And given their relatively small size, usually anywhere between one to almost five inches, you have nothing to fear if you encounter one of these guys in the water. They just look kind of crazy. Number five, the squid worm. This truly bizarre creature was totally unknown to scientists until 2007, when an undersea robot captured some footage of a strange tentacled creature. Scientists were totally puzzled at first, but they obviously did some testing and figured out what exactly this guy was. It was a new species, and they named it the squid worm of the Sama. The Sama is part a cultural reference to the Philippines, which is where this squid worm was discovered. This thing is decked out with all kinds of appendages and tentacles. It's got eight arms, which they amazingly actually use for breathing. Plus, they sport two extra appendages that they use to swim around. On top of all that, they've got six sensory organs that they use for sight and smell. Six! In a 2010 article in National Geographic, it was suggested that the squid worm might be in the midst of some sort of evolutionary transitional period. I mean, if you think about it, can't you say that for all animals? Number four, pink see-through fantasia. Pink see-through fantasia. Hmm, that's an interesting name. Oh yeah, and it's actually a type of sea cucumber. Also an interesting name. Unknown to humans until 2007, the pink see-through fantasia is basically a swimming bag of intestines. Does that sound appetizing yet? You can see its intestines because, if you can't tell by now, its skin is transparent. We don't really know too much about these guys because the experts are still trying to gather data on them, and 10 years really isn't all that long compared to the billions of years the Earth has existed. Here's what we do know. They're typically found in remote depths of the Pacific Ocean, usually near the Philippines and Indonesia. They're bioluminescent, and they'll emit light to freak out their predators. Other than that, the scientific community is still working on finding out more about them. What I do know is that this guy isn't exactly going to be winning a beauty contest anytime soon. Number three, the Arctic Hydromedusa. At first glance, you might think this is a type of jellyfish. If so, you'd be correct. However, the Arctic Hydromedusa is smaller than your typical jellyfish. As the name would suggest, this particular type of jellyfish is often found in Arctic waters. Also, it sort of looks like if Darth Vader somehow conceived a baby with a jellyfish. I mean, how would they even... Uh, okay, that's a disturbing visual image. Uh, let's just move on. Uh, actually, there are dozens of species that are related to the Hydromedusa, many of them looking like something from another planet entirely. All of them are different, but typical characteristics include transparent skin and tentacles that all have some sort of stinging mechanism. But any way you put it, they do all look pretty cool. Number two, wolffish. In 2015, photos began circulating that showed a massive wolffish caught off the coast of Japan. Almost immediately, rumors began to circulate that the abnormally large fish was the result of the nuclear fallout from Fukushima disaster back in 2011. Can animals actually change this dramatically after a big accident? Hold up, let's pump the brakes here. Turns out, experts were able to discredit the idea that this fish was the result of any radiation whatsoever. It was just a freakishly large wolffish. According to Dr. Timothy Masu, an expert on radiation at the University of South Carolina, species who are affected by radiation actually tend to get smaller, not bigger. Plus, as time goes, the fallout from the radiation has steadily decreased because of natural decay. So why is this fish so big? After all, your average run-of-the-mill wolffish 
grows to around three feet long. According to Masoup, the large size was likely because that this particular wolffish had lived a long, healthy life and just continued to grow as a result. Combine the size of this catch with the fact that wolffish have sort of this prehistoric river monster look going for them, it's easy to see why the idea of a large, radioactive species of wolffish roaming the waters would scare people. Number 1. Sea Angel Generally speaking, slugs and angels don't have all that much in common. Except in the case of sea angels, which are a type of really small sea slugs found in oceans all over the world. With an almost angelic-like appearance, these tiny little petropods swim around the ocean feasting on sea butterflies, which are also odd creatures, but those guys are a whole different story. It might be easy to mistake sea angels for jellyfish since they also have transparent gelatinous bodies. And while they may be small, measuring only about five centimeters, predators should still beware. Sea angels aren't always as nice as their name would suggest. Probably the coolest thing about them is that they eat the venomous Portuguese man of war. And these guys are able to store their venom in basically what looks like their fingertips for their own use. Some amphipods know this and they'll snatch up sea angels and carry them around as some sort of shield to protect themselves from other more dangerous fish. Now that's what I call smart. Here's what's China. next. The owner of the goat, a woman surnamed Song, explained that it was a difficult birth but the goat is standing on four of its legs and is feeding. We'll probably count this as a genetic anomaly and not as a new species. The piglet with a monkey...